Welcome to the final wager for this second semifinal game of this year's college championship and another treat of a match. We've got Ben making a late charge in double jeopardy, taking the lead with 19,800. Terry second with 12,000. Eric third, 7,200. Let's look at what each should do. First and second, Ben and Terry. Terry doubles up. She's going to have 24,000. So for Ben to cover her, we've got the wager at 4,201. Now if he gets it wrong with that wager, He's going to be left with 15599 So you'll see that neither Terry nor Eric will have enough money by standing pat, so they'll have to wager everything. Terry will have to wager at least uh, 3600 but she should wager 12000 Unfortunately for Eric, he can only get to 14400 which is not going to be enough. He's out of contention. And the trick for this, which is important in a second, is you take the difference between first and second, that's 7,800. If it's greater than third place's score, third place cannot uh, win with rational wagering by first place. So very straightforward wagering, and Terry was the only one who got it right. She wagered enough. I would have wagered everything, but it wouldn't have mattered either way. Ben wagered properly, got it wrong. Eric, might as well go all into that situation. Now here's a situation I find much more interesting. Ben found a daily double under an $800 clue in a math category with two other clues remaining, both of which were worth $400. Now if I were me, as a math category, I would try to lock Terry out. She's in second place and I have a pretty substantial margin. How would you do that? Well, you figure out how much Terry could possibly have at the end if she gets both these $400 clues right. She's going to add $800 to her score, $12,400. So double that. It's going to be 24800 So Ben will want to wager so that he gets above 24800 That's a wager of 8001 If he's wrong, he's going to be at 8799 still in second place, still in good position going into final. Now, if he's feeling less confident about his chances on this clue, what he might want to do to preserve his lead is to wager smaller, but to bet to lock Eric out. If you're in first place and you get it wrong in Final Jeopardy and there are two players who can catch you, that's twice as many opportunities to lose as if there's only one player, Terry, chasing you. So how do you do that? Well, remember that rule that I discussed very briefly earlier, which says that if third place has less than the difference between first and second, then he's locked out. Another way we can say that is if the total of second and third score is less than first score, then third is locked out. So how much will Ben have to wager to lock out Eric? Well, right now, Terry and Eric have a total of 18,800. And it doesn't matter who gets these last two clues. If both of them, one of them gets one each, or two of them get both of them, or one of them gets both of them, They'll add another $800 to that total between the two of them. So they'll be up to $19,600. Therefore, Ben will want to wager so that he's at least at $19,601. That means he'll want to wager $2,801. And I don't know if this is what Ben was thinking, but he wagered $3,000, which did lock Eric out. That's the fun thing about Jeopardy math. You don't have to know this rule, but if you do, it probably won't hurt you. That was a great semifinal, and I'm looking forward to the third and concluding semi with my girl Erica from Middlebury. Will she join Terry and Tucker? Find out tomorrow on the final wager. We'll see you then.